Happy African History Month. Today is February 21st, 2018. Today's episode will be uploaded. It's fact, it's the first episode I'm going to be uploading today. So the other episodes that um, I've already um, I've already recorded will be uploaded after um, this episode. And there's a reason why. It's because today, February 21st, is the anniversary of the murder and assassination of Malcolm X. And that's why I always choose the February 21st to be the day that um, I honor Malcolm X and make him our topic. Um, Malcolm... <laughs> Yeah, I definitely appreciate Malcolm, Mal appreciate Malcolm X in the um, scope of African history. He is, I, I think he's, there's so many ways in which I identify with him personally. Um, that's like, like I didn't even realize it at the time. But like, as I look, as I, as, as I started learning more about him, I realized, wow. Like it, it was, it was, it was, it was incredible. Um, one thing I want to talk about first was who is his family. Um, you know, he, he had a large family: father, a mother. Um, you know, they had a lot of kids. His father was a preacher, um, and he was a, a proponent of Garveyism. Uh, Marcus Garvey, he was a follower of Marcus Garvey, and so he preached about Pan-Africanism, and that made him a target. His father was actually murdered by the Ku Klux Klan because they didn't like him. They felt he was an uppity um, black person, and they wanted to shut him up, shut him down, and stop his ideas from spreading. But I think that is one of the critical aspects of who Malcolm became because he had a foundation in um, in consciousness, in being aware, in resisting, um, and having some, some sense of pride, uh, some sense of black pride and dignity. And I think that's, I think it's an essential to understand that that is what black pride is about it's about dignity as opposed to hating other people because um the the alternative to black pride was black hate self-hatred black self-hatred and a lot of you know this was instilled into black people through force of violence that yeah hate yourself um because if you hold your head up high, we will knock it off. We will, yeah, we will go upside your head. We will, we will torture you. We will beat you. We will murder you. We will subject, subject you to all sorts of horror. So you better hold your head down and um, think less of yourself. But his father was not that person. His father had that sense of pride, that sense of dignity. And it, it, it. It shows in you know Malcolm and his and his siblings, because it, as you find out later on, his siblings also were involved in um, uh, became involved with the Nation of Islam. But back up, um, after his father's death, his mother mother had a very hard time um, with his father's death. The insurance company called his murder a suicide, uh, so they didn't want to pay out. And she went, eventually was institutionalized. Um, so Malcolm did go off the rails. Actually, just one point I also want to talk about. When Malcolm was a, a young man in school, and he had uh, told his teacher, said, well, what do you want to be? He was asking the students what they wanted to be when they grow up. And Malcolm said he wanted to be a lawyer. And his teacher said, that's not a realistic idea for uh, a black person for, for a black kid um why don't you 
if you want to be something, be realistic. Maybe you should be a carpenter, work with your hands or something. <laughs> Which is interesting that this is what the educational system was doing to, to black children. Um, not encouraging their growth, not fostering it, but maintaining their expectations and keeping them in their place. So f fast forward, Malcolm, you know, he goes off the, the all, all, all down the wrong path. Um, in fact, I think it's interesting that in his autobiography, he described himself as a lowlife, um, selling drugs, um, doing drugs, you know, pimping. He was just engaged in all sorts of um, just just bad behavior. He ultimately wound up going to prison. Um, I think he believed, uh, received a 10-year sentence. And um, that's when he encountered uh, the Nation of Islam. And this is one of the things I find so interesting of what the Nation of Islam was able to accomplish for him. Because he was a self-described, self-admitted, low-life scumbag. He, this is what he says. But with the Nation of Islam's help, he was able to clean himself up and become respectful, respectable, become a better version of himself. Instead, stop being, I think instead of saying he became a better version of himself, he stopped being a lesser version of himself. So he was able to recognize his true potential. Um, and that, that's one of the things I find astounding. Um, it's, I find it interesting that while he was in prison, he started reading the dictionary. And he wouldn't just, I mean, he, he would learn the words, understand the words, use the words. And if you see him debate, if you see him uh, uh, give speeches, especially the debate, it's, it's, it's so interesting. He would demolish people, people with degrees and, and, <laughs> and, and, and letters behind their names. And he would just run circles around them. The man was brilliant. And that reminds me of that moment when he says he wanted to be a lawyer when he grows up. And he showed how much aptitude he had. Like, just imagine had he been in a society that fostered, encouraged, and, 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 and uh, uh, helped his, his innate talents to, 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 blo to bloom. How, I mean, just imagine, look what he did in spite of, of, of the system. So imagine what he would have done and what he would have been capable of with a supportive system in place. That, that's one of the things that really is amazing to me. Um, but yeah, he was able to, to come out of prison. He was a phenomenal speaker. The way he was able to reach people and um, to, to really to touch them, you know, and move them was, was amazing. The way he was able to just logically break down, <laughs> you know, a uh, critique of him. And, you know, they would send various people to try to discredit him and his ideas. And he would just embarrass them. He'd make them look like fools. And that was, was just, just just so, watching him speak, I, 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 I remember watching videos of Malcolm and just watching him speak, the things he would say, it's, it's like, wow, like you just like, you want to jump up and start cheering because you're like, oh, wow, like he, he would come at, at, at uh, arguments from such a logical and common sense perspective and just completely uh, uh, undercut any argument against him. It, it, it was, it's truly a sight to behold. And I encourage you if, you, if you haven't seen videos of Malcolm X, I encourage you to look online, start listening to 
um, watching some of his debates, listening to some of his speeches. The man was truly inspirational. Uh, and that's, that's basically why I want to talk about him today. And the reason why I'm going to leave it there today is because I'm going to get more into his philosophy tomorrow. Because, and this is one of the, my favorite parts of the year. Um, so yesterday I did, well for the 20th, I did the Malcolm, uh, Martin Luther King. Today I, I, I talked about Martin, uh, Malcolm X. Tomorrow, what I want to do is compare Malcolm X's, uh, well, Martin Luther King Jr.'s philosophy, at least his core identified philosophy, um, you know, of nonviolent resistance versus Malcolm X's by any means necessary philosophy. Uh, and I wanted to compare those two philosophies because I think that's um, an exciting and uh, incredibly insightful um, uh, debate to be had uh, or discussion to have. And so uh, that's what was on the menu tomorrow, which is why I'm going to leave our discussion here today. Um, but I thank you for joining me. Happy African History Month, and I will see you tomorrow.